Well. To those who have just joined, welcome. Uh, we're going to run it back. We were supposed to play in the historic Strixhaven qualifying event uh, thing this morning. Around about, what's the time now? Around about 24 hours ago. Uh, I unfortunately slept through my nap. Um, which meant that I missed the two hour window. Um, in Australia, those events are held, uh, the registration is between midnight and 2 a.m. for me, my time. Uh, and I was pretty tired, so I had a nap and then I just slept through it. So we're trying to work our way back up, get to Diamond first, um, hopefully in the coming days before Strixhaven comes out so then we can be in Diamond to try and learn our way up to Mythic like we did with Cowtime. Someone's got their email. Barrack someone. Barrack at gmail.com A bold strategy. Putting your email as your magic account name but you know there's lots of green here uh there's bound in gold or blizzard brawl which are the two cards that i'm thinking about primarily I'm going to take Bound and Gold because I think it's advantageous for me to know that I'm likely to put them into green. Remember, feel free to drop a comment in the chat or if you're watching later on. And I'll be sure to have a read through. Um, let's see. Kai's onslaught. I do not want to pick Starnheim Corsa. This pack, just in general, absolutely sucks. Hopefully I'm not the only one thinking that. Like, Rare's Useless Mistwalker or Coma's Faithful. Or Ice Hide Troll. I'll just take the Onslaught because it's in the colours which I already am. Um, this is a pretty clear sign that they don't want to be in black. It's Egon and Feed the Serpent. Tundra Fumarole. So far we have uh, one creature. But I could see us taking Tundra Fumarole here. It's over like Axide Cavalry or if I wanted to stay in black, Death Knell Berserker. Death Knell Berserker is a card you want to be taking about pick 10, not pick 4. So I'll take the Fumarole and see where it takes us. Um... That's the second raven. I rate raven a bit higher than others, but uh, here we might look towards Kennel Master? Question mark. Not sure what the right pick was there. Okay. So we're not seeing much white. We are seeing red and black. It's 
so because we are seeing red and black maybe we start thinking that that's the way we're leaning one of the provoked patrols probably comes back because everyone hates that card uh, there's raise the Draugr, Jarl, Dwarven Reinforcements. Because I'm red black kind of wants to play little dorky things and just keep chipping in so a couple of yarls can be helpful as removal spells also just three twos that we can cast if we want to um, so the coma's faithful has some synergy with egon or we just take Pregnant Berserker as a Berserker in what is typically the Berserker colours. Um, I like just taking the haste to be honest. Um, and here we have too many Yarls, but we'll take another one. And as predicted, the Provoke Patrols came back around. There is a chance I play that card even though it's not usually great and 14th pick Kennel Master seems like we have picked up on something. Whether our cards are very good, that's another point, but okay, so I want to get my two drops filled out. Don't really want to be taking Death Nail Berserker first pick. Maybe Bloodline Pretender is a better option. Yeah, I think I would be too embarrassed to pick that. Um, the other alternative would be Skemfire Shadow, Shadow Sage. Uh, here we get a Demon Bolt. We did need that, so that's pretty good. Um, and then raise the Draugr we would like to play. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, Carter. Gold card in our colours. Um... Actually, I saw this cool uh, red-black deck which had some reanimation uh, with Imistrum Raider kind of churning things into the bin uh, a few weeks ago. That was quite effective. I didn't even realise that Smashing Success destroyed an artefact. I currently have zero, two drops. So we'll take one here. take a squash to probably replace provoke the trolls wouldn't mind a rune of speed in this deck if we can get some equipment like goldbane pick for example uh, that said hmm. yeah I'll just take this two drop I do want to have plenty of them I'm really hoping in pack 3 we get hooked up with some kind of reward for being in red-black. Uh, 
guess we'll take the log tree so no one else can have that fun. Do not plan to play Spawn Effigy ever. Uh, I guess we can take village rights because we have Egon. It's not worse to have creatures that go into the bin. Village rights I normally do not play, but maybe it can work here in this case. Imistrum Raider also puts things in the bin for Egon so it can live a bit longer. All right. Okay, so we could take Grim Draugr with zero Snowlands, or we could take Shimmer Fail. I have no idea on Earth why Shimmer Fail is here at pick 12. I'll take Goldvein pick. Someone else is taking Elves, because that uh, Elf in pack 1 did not come back. So there's Demon Bolt and Blood Sky Berserker. Demon Bolt seems a better option for us. Uh, another Axe Guard Cavalry. Or we could be going Demonic Gifts. Raga's Helm, by far the most powerful card here. Um, I'm seeing the Raider and the Berserker as two drops that might come back, and I'm thinking that the Raider's more likely. So I have, because I have a number of Yarls, I think the Immistrum Raider's going to be solid. Don't want to play Carter's Vicious Return. I will play Run Amok though. Oh, and Rise of the Dreadman. So we can just, maybe that's a good combo when Carter forces them to attack. Uh, so there's Craven Hulk as a 4-4, or Coma's Face Faithful as a 3-1 to just keep the synergy going. I'm going to try and just make my deck consistent, if not super powerful. Um. Okay. So provoke the trolls is getting cut. I have one, two, three, four removal spells. Five if you can't run amok. Here's a demonic gifts. Raga's Helm goes over here. Uh, shackles, I guess. Ascent. Doesn't matter.
Okay, so let's have a look at it here. We're playing 16 lands. I know that much. So we have a few cuts to make. This is my initial thought. This goes over here. Cut a yarl. Add. One of these back in. Cut a swamp. Right. There's a chance Provoke the Troll should be in just as a 3 mana burn spell. I would have really liked the Imistrum Skullcan, the Rakdos land. I found that that actually is one of the more important cards in this kind of deck. Because you end up doing about 17 and then you go, okay, now I'm stuck. Unless you've got some big bomb like Imistrum uh, Raider, the the dragon, then you kind of run out of gas. We also don't happen to have any racer draugers. We saw two, both of them didn't come back because they were quite early in the pack. So someone in the pod was in Black Elves. I can guarantee it. So this has to be on black. I could have attacked with my 2-2. Two -two. That was a mistake. The head removal spell plus 
a way to crew, I would not be dead because I'm gaining four. Okay. are attacking. Squash. Rise of the Dreadmark. I feel like that was good. I feel like our opponent feels that was good. Unfortunately, not going to complete that mission objective of blue and white spells, which I just saw. Oops. Please foretell. Let me get in three damage. Thank you. in this land because I need to start getting rid of these battlefield raptors You know what? That was a crap attack. But because it was so crap, it was genius. Alright. So 
So I can play Bloodline Pretender here. Name Berserker. It also allows me to play Squash. So whatever they try to ruin a fight, I can kill. Then I play Carter, invite them to attack, and then crack back with a whole bunch. This is the plan. That's a pretty good draw. Give this haste. Smash with the team. Attacking for 8, 11, 14. They have, like, zero good blocks. Yeah. They were going to do that, they should have lost the four, I reckon. I guess they wanted to make sure their things didn't die because it walls off my Okay, so I do this and then I go just attack with all and they're dead unless they have Iron Verdict, in which case they're not dead. Oh no, they go to one. Yeah. Uh, sure. They have to attack. have a jump attack. Yeah. Attack, good game. Okay. Nice old aggressive deck. We think back to that attack that represented runner mark. So clever. And so dumb. All at the same time. not really what our deck's trying to do but we are going first so we have draws towards what we want I was thinking about Bloodline Pretender naming Cleric, but it's not really where I want to be.
Interesting. I'll just attack, see what they do. Part of the reasoning was because this is a changeling which allows squash to be cheaper. How likely do we think they are to have snake snakeskin veil? Very. Damn. Okay. I was never playing around mammoth growth. The ice side troll, remember? Oh no! I was about to say, the ice side troll, remember, needs to have two snowlands, so we're in a fine spot in that regard. Then they put that out. But I guess if they're doing that, then they're thinking of blocking with the ice side troll. And activating. of instant speed versus something like tundra fumarole so Egon gets another attack and then I play Draugr's Helm and then next turn I can equip Draugr's Helm and then the attack is even better Hotel something. Okay. Let's 
a divine verdict. Let's um, play this. Pretty aggressive line by our opponent. Certainly block here. So we're out of gas. Looks like they're out of gas too. I will play this. Seems pretty easy for me to see a line where they have a removal spell or they have a big creature I'll just attack with both I'll trade yep, those were some fine mills Okay, land versus land. I feel bad about my position given that as soon as they play an inevitable worm, then I'm not in a good spot. That's a decent draw. That's a very good draw. Okay, so attack with both. Trade zombie for Horizon Seeker, basically. Yikes. Did not expect them to have Warhorn Blast. Um, it seems like they attacked when they had no blocker, which left them dead, which seems unwise. I know, such insight that you get from me. Alright, we are 3-0 and with our Rakdos aggro deck. Get another two wins and we'll be very happy. Get another four, then we'll be even more happy. Um, this is a keep. We have one. Uh, oh, we're in the play as well. If they are a slow deck, we could just get them. So if they foretell here, we go bang, smash them for five.
So we go bang, smash him for two or three. Vault robber though. Wow, dude. Why are they playing that card? them to attack. Give this haste. That one comes into play tapped, so that one I'm not concerned about for next turn. Keep the pressure up. Uh, this is on black. So the only card that we don't want to see is Battle of Frost and Fire. Oh. Yeah, dead. Right. Right. Surely they knew it came into play tapped. Okay. We are five wins away from hitting diamond again. Oh my god, sorry failure guaranteed. Yep, there was a few, a few interesting points in that green-white game where both players were just drawing lands, that's for sure. Cheeky brat, mistakes were made. I like it, I like it, Mr. Failure Guaranteed, or Mr. Failure Guaranteed, whichever you are. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. This has castable spells. The great thing about aggro decks is that you kind of just look and you go, oh, yep, that'll do. Because really, your cards are not that powerful on their own. But we'll go cavalry. Opponent goes first. So lucky. They're thinking very hard whether to mulligan. Okay, they kept. Mm, still play this on red. like they probably kept hands with 
only red sources and an Emistrum Raider because that feels like a, a tank keep to me. Um, I'm not blocking, I'm going to set up this Rise of the Dreadmon and it's going to be good. First, we'll attack. Will we attack? Yes, because... We're not blocking anyway. Uh, and then we will foretell... Yarl. Demon Bolt with their one red mana and their foretold card. Little do they know. You want to make an Azorius warrior deck just to spread the cancer to historic. I don't play enough historic to be honest. Um, right, so here, what are they saying? I don't know and for this turn I don't care. turn we go ooh. so we can do that plus foretell that is that good probably not quite enough. I think just foretell this past turn. And so Yeah, it's true, I could get myself a TV screen or, and a HDMI cable just for the chat window. Um, i got to work out something. I was thinking uh, earlier today um, that I need to go and unfull screen myself so then I can just drag the chat window in front. Uh, but at the time I had no chat, so it wasn't a big deal for me. Alright. So 
I'll just do this. No effects. That would be mad to tap off of the two green, the two snow. Yep. like they're timing themselves out and then oh thinking bang oh that's a shame oh I'll, I'll do this anyway okay Right. So I need to kill this right now. And then I'll offer this cheeky one. No, this one. That attack is fine. Yep. Okay. So Putting them on nothing.
and we're gonna try and go squash, run amok, kill you. We do need to draw land for that to happen. Or we could draw... No, the changeling's not going to be good enough either. I guess Breakneck Berserker, without me having done the maths, it seems pretty good. A lot of the time I'm just going on feel, I'm like, yeah, they feel pretty dead, or I feel pretty dead. Um, clearly we have to block Haji Mob this turn. That is a given. Okay, they're thinking a lot about God knows what. Yeah. As it is, this is five, nine getting through. So, if they have nothing, then... Attack with all. They block the th Agar on the 3-2 and the Sentinel on the 4-4. Four, four. And then they're taking 4. Functionally, I get the same result this way, and it's a bit safer. No block, and they're dead. With Actually, with the blocks that I outlined, they were dead. Um, yeah, pass priority. Um, so I'm dead to two removal spells. Yeah, so with the um, all attack play, uh, if they block on here, yeah. assigned damage, indicating that they were dead. But yeah, if they had anything, then my other potentially lethal line just left me dead on the crackback immediately, because I can play Coma's Faithful, but they can before uh, before blocks 
shoot it down with Haggy Mob. Alright. How about now? Yeah, it did, did look an attack of hope, hopelessness. Right, 5 0. So far, so good. Right. Well, if you're talking about Kaldheim being a low power set, I think Strixhaven is going to be that times a thousand. To me, it just looks like big, um, big like kitchen table magic cards half the time. Right. This is doable because Immistrum Raider can get rid of a land. Because otherwise, we've probably got a few too many. Uh, mountain, so we can pretend we have Frostbite, even though it's not in our deck. That card's pretty good against us. Love them attacking. Love it. Okay, makes sense then. Right. Play this on Berserker. We have two in our hand. Uh, clearly, no attacks against the first strikers. blocks. They're playing an intricate wow. Okay. They're playing is it aggro by the looks of it. Uh so I'll play this, I'll bin the mountain, I'll foretell demon bolt unless I draw a two drop. Again, I should have attacked. That was a mistake. Because they can pretty freely attack with the Fearless Pops. Though if they do, then I have a big crack back. I've never seen an Izzet deck like this before, ever, in my whole life. Alright. Smash. They have this. So run amok would probably be good here. Wow, this is aggressive. Wow. 
the Extrata. Yeah. Tap the Pretender, that's fine. I'll kill it. And they're dead. Right. Six, ten. Good game. Triple Fearless Pup is at deck. Okay. Alright. Right, six and oh so far. Here we go. Got a couple of hits at the seven. All right. Now the keep would like to draw a land. I'll play the cavalry first. So then if I draw one, then I can go cavalry, breakneck, berserker, attack for a bunch. Okay, that could change things. Expensive card, draw the land, uh, offer the trade. Bloodline Pretender is a little awkward here because we really want to be playing our haste threats if they let us, but I guess that's okay. Uh, this on red. Um, we will trade Immistrum Raider for either of their creatures. So we're definitely playing Carter next turn. Holy moly. Okay. So, ooh. so. Because they have Sword of the Realms, I will gladly clear any of their attackers. So 
So Sword of the Realms on Story Seeker and Raven Wings on it, and then Attack. And they had this big lifelink vigilance thing. Shot. Um. They go to 15, I draw a land. They go to virtually 20. 14. Yeah, I'll block. with all they can kill Umis from Raider take 11 then they have story seeker equip then I draw a removal spell and kill them okay to be right now. Right now. Ah! can't have them attack with it. That's a pretty good draw. Axe Guard Armory can get them removal spell in two turns time. They go up to 12 here. Then they go down, I equip, they go down to eight. Or they can double block. If that's Iron Verdict... Oh no, that's okay. That's okay. If it's Iron Verdict, it's still bad for us, but... Hey, what can we do? We're trying to be a mythic here. Hmm. 
Okay. What you got? What you got, opponent? So they needed to equip Raven Wings and Ah, oh, they found the removal spell. Okay. Now we're boned. So, guess we have to... Yeah, I think the opponent's correct. But maybe they get sloppy. They attack with all. Yeah. They attack with all, and I draw. Kennel Master. Okay, no. Ah, oh, no. That's the goal. Kennel Master. Yep. Good game, opponent. Yeah. Yep. So we lost to a Halvar sword. So... Yep, Story Seeker, gain 5 life a turn, 4 life a turn, was pretty good. It just, there was that one turn where a removal spell won the game, and after that point I think I was hoping for a miracle, let's put it that way.
Yeah, my assumption was that it wasn't Doomscar, but I just didn't have a read on it. Um, to beat Julian this time. We want some red. Kind of wishing my Immistrum Raider was the one that I sacrificed to the Frostbite Gods, but... Okay. they have. Hmm. I'm just going to double foretell here. Master lives us to Carter plus Demon Bolt, an attacking creature, and block Yeti if they don't make it unblockable. Obviously, we're running lower on cards, three cards versus six, but that's what we signed up to. Pretty happy with the Behold. Less happy with the two top. That's pretty intimidating. They're also in a seven win uh, game with Frostbeak Yeti, which means the rest of their deck must be awesome. Um, so, hmm. They block. Probably. I'm gonna attack. I have 10 power on the board. Hmm. 
Even if they play like Berg Strider, it's not the end of the world. Just play Carter, Demon Bolt. Move on with my life. If they Rast, Bloodline Predenda would live. If they did the mini Wrath like the Pyroclasm, then both Kennelmaster and Pretender would live. If they go Agar plus Squash, that would probably be worst case scenario. And then we still attack for 7. Yep. Um... I'll put it to them. Decline, keep this card in my hand, thank you. Alright. So this is the value of cheap spells. They've played one thing a turn on each of their turns. Aside from the time that they foretold after uh, playing Behold, right now they're playing Glimpse, which means they are just so likely to be dead. Incredibly likely to be dead. Yeah. Plus another blocker. Okay. Kill it. Really don't see what I get punished by here. Good games. Alright, so we're three little wins away from Diamond Tier. Uh, they had to depart the realm in hand, so they had one. Uh, they could. They could live a turn uh, before I killed the Carful Harbinger, and then they were gone. Right, GG's. Pretty good result from this Rakdos deck, a 7-1. Uh, here's the recap, which will involve me pressing the print screen button keep a track of all my seven win decks so I can kind of see similarities one of the things I notice here two of 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 three of uh, so it makes it quite consistent um, and uh, we never ended up playing village rights at all uh, but otherwise we played everything else and I was pretty happy with how the deck played. Um, so, good result. 7-1 with a Rakdos aggro deck in Premier Draft, Cowtime Limited.